The following program is produced by the Living Church of God. Why were you born? What is the real purpose for your life? Have you ever backed off and asked yourself that question, my friends? Have you ever really proved that there's a genuine, exciting purpose for your life? I'm not talking about just going to heaven or floating off somewhere or something vague. I'm talking about a specific and awesome purpose for which you were created, for which you now are drawing breath. Do you know what that great purpose is? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world. This week, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith asks, Why were you born? And now, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. During World War II, Sir Winston Churchill stated before the United States Congress, there is a great design and purpose being worked out here below. Frankly, Mr. Churchill died having never understood that purpose. But if you are willing to really believe what your Creator tells us in His inspired Word, you can know, you can understand that great purpose. Remember, there are over 400 different denominations and sects in the United States. They all call themselves Christian, yet they all disagree about various doctrines and about various practices. So you'd better be willing to genuinely study God's Word to be sure of your understanding. People are all mixed up on these things. Very few understand the great purpose of God. You can understand. Turn with me, if you have a Bible handy, turn with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy in your Bible, chapter 3 and verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is what God tells us in His inspired Word. This book tells us about prophecies affecting major nations, and they have happened, and they are happening. This Bible tells us about the purpose in life, and it is coming about, it is going to take place. We need to listen to what the Creator says, the one who gives us life and breath. He says, all Scripture is God-breathed, and it is profitable for doctrine, that means teaching, for reproof, to show us where we're wrong. Sometimes we're all wrong, folks. We need to be willing to admit it and to turn around and go the other way. This book is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. We don't need a bunch of other books written by men. We really don't. Various groups and sects have their prophet or prophetess write some book and then they think they've got to read that book to be saved or to understand the Bible. No, you don't. You can study this book. It's certainly all right to get, you know, booklets or to get programs like this to help you understand the Bible. The Bible shows it's good to have a teacher, but God says, prove all things and hold fast that which is good. Now, what does the Bible say about the ultimate purpose for human life? Think about it. What does the Bible actually say? Turn to Psalm 8, if you would, back in your Old Testament. Psalm 8, the beloved man of God, King David of Israel. David, out under the stars at night, looking up and thinking, Why am I here? And wrote this in Psalm 8, verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Yes, we're tiny, puny little creatures here on this earth compared to God, puny in power compared to the angels of God, but God has given us great opportunity. And why is God so concerned? He's made us a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. In God's plan, he has given us awesome glory and honor, as we shall see. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under his feet. And he names the various animals and sea creatures and so on that God has put under us. Picture in your mind the really big animals, the lions and tigers and elephants and giraffes and so forth, and the sea creatures over which little puny man has control. They don't put us in cages or tanks and bring us 
somewhere. We put them in cages and tanks and bring them over here and put them in zoos. And yet they're bigger than we are by far. And did you know that mankind will someday have dominion even over the farthest stars in the vast universe? Yes, we will, but not in the way most humans imagine. They think they'll do it by scientific means. They won't, as I will explain. Turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. This was more than one talking, our the one who became Jesus Christ was the Logos, the spokesman, with God the Father back there. God created all things through Jesus Christ, it tells us back in Ephesians 3 and verse 9. Let us make man in our image, they said. Man is made in the image of God, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds, the cattle, every creeping thing. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him. Then God blessed them, and God said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. And again named various creatures. Mankind was given dominion or rule over all creation, here on earth at least at this time. How and why? Why was God given, giving man such dominion, and certainly dominion of the vast universe later on? Think about it. Think and picture why God would do that. Back in Hebrews, the second chapter, turning to your New Testament, Hebrews chapter 2 and beginning in verse 5, For he has not put the world to come, of which we speak, in subjection to angels. They're not going to be over the earth or over the universe. But one testified in a certain place, saying, What is man that you're mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? You made him, man, a little lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. Now, that's a quote from Psalm 8, which we just read. Then the apostle Paul, who undoubtedly wrote this book, went on to say, For in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing, notice this, nothing that is not put under him or put under man. In God's plan, nothing is not put under man. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. Not yet, but eventually all will be put under man. And a number of the Bible commentaries authored by the Greek scholars say that this phrase refers to the entire universe. Yes, mankind even now is working and planning for this eventuality. We know that. Scientists think we're going to conquer space. And we may conquer part or most of this little solar system, but this is just a little tiny pocket out in the universe somewhere. To conquer the whole universe, to go to the furthest planet, would take generations and generations of human beings being born, growing up, living in capsules, space capsules, in order to reach the farthest planet. They would never get to play out in the, out in the grass and on the, in the parks and in the woods and so forth like we do. They would never be able to see the things that we do if they were able to be born and multiply and continue to live for thousands of years in space capsules. So what is the real answer? I will specifically explain that question in a few minutes. But now, I invite you, my friends, to call or write for one of the most exciting and fascinating and encouraging booklets we have ever published. This booklet is entitled, Your Ultimate Destiny. This booklet spells out in absolute detail the very reason for all of us drawing life and breath. Your Ultimate Destiny will give you proof after proof from God's Word on why you were born. So call to write today. Request your absolutely free copy of this most encouraging booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. 
Now back to our topic, why were you born? Turn again with me to Hebrews chapter 2, Paul writing in verse 8, For in that he's put all in subjection under him, that is, under man, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under him. We do not yet see all things. And as I pointed out before the break, many of the Bible commentaries acknowledge that this expression, all things, can mean the entire universe. God is eventually intending to put the entire universe under man. Man, sci man and man scientists now are trying to find out a way to get to outer space, but they don't know how to do it. They can't keep reproducing in space capsules cut off from everything normal, the water, the air, everything we've known. That wouldn't be a very good life anyway. But God is going to make it possible for man once he's born of God, of course, to become over the entire universe. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God might taste death for everyone. Christ had to come down to this earth and be made fully human to die. And, of course, we understand and appreciate that awesome sacrifice that he made. He made that sacrifice, my friends, so that someday we may become as he is, full sons of God. Lots of people think, well, I'm a child of God, and that they go around making all kinds of mistakes and doing this and that. In this life, we're begotten children of God, but to be full sons of God is to be like God. Can we understand that? I have four sons. They are like me. They are not some lesser creature like goats or like uh, turtles or something like that. They're fully human. Are God's sons fully human? We have to start thinking that through. God says in His Word, each thing reproduces after His kind. Does God reproduce after His kind? Let's think that through and be honest about it. We've got to do that. So Jesus was made a little lower that he might taste death for everyone, you see, to reconcile us to God. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons to glory. We're going to have glory someday. And we need to understand what kind of glory that is. Jesus calls his true followers brothers. He's bringing many sons to glory to make the author of their salvation perfect through sufferings. He had to go through suffering, and so do we, to write the lessons that we need to learn in human suffering, and we may not learn those lessons till later. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He's not ashamed to call us brethren or brothers, as some translations have it. Christ calls us brothers. Does he call cows or horses or pigs brothers? We're not some lower species. We're going to be called brothers. We are now made in God's image. And at that time, we will be born to the Spirit and be full brothers of Jesus Christ, full sons of God. Think about it. He is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing praise to you. That's what Jesus said. Let's notice something else that God inspired. Here in the book of Romans, the Apostle Paul wrote something very wonderful and powerful, and many of us have not understood that properly. Turn to Romans chapter 8 and verse 29. For whom he foreknew, whom God foreknew, as he predestined us to a tremendous glory, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, or to be like Christ, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, human beings are made in the image of God, but we're not full sons of God yet. Christ was born to the Spirit, glorified, and we will be born of the Spirit. And Christ will be the firstborn of many brethren at that time. Are Christ's brothers to be some lesser creature again? Or does he have full brothers, real brothers? Or is God uh, indulging here in a lot of gobbledygook in the way he talks? Well, of course, he's not. Back in verse 14 of this wonderful chapter, Romans 8:14, God says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And we certainly are in this life begotten sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of sonship, as it is translated in many translations. The spirit of sonship, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. We become full sons of God, Jesus, just as Jesus is a full son of God. 
The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, you see, we're not inheritors yet, we are joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer, and we do have to go through trials and tests and suffering, that we may be glorified together. We are going to be glorified together, you see, with Christ. And we need to understand that. Christ has awesome glory. And back in Revelation chapter 1, it reveals the fact that Christ shines like the sun. His face comes right out. His eyes are like a flame of fire. He is awesome in glory and power and majesty. And so we're going to be glorified together with Him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. Not to us, my friends. It says in us. We are going to share in that glory. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits the revealing of the sons of God. The creation is suffering. We're having all this pollution all over the world. The air is polluted. The water is polluted. Uh, animals are being destroyed by human beings, and human beings are destroying one another. And the whole creation is suffering, awaiting the revealing of the sons of God when we're finally born of God. For the creation which was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. God is allowing us to go our own way here for 6,000 years in hope that we will learn some lessons to fit us to live for all eternity and to live in peace. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption under the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. The whole creation is waiting the revealing of the sons of God. Think about that. We're going to be part of the very family of God ruling the vast universe. Picture the stars and the planets of this universe. They will someday be in subjection to the sons of God. And God's Word makes that very plain when you understand it. We have an awesome future. Turn to Revelation now, chapter 1, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 4 here. John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and was and is to come, from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. Christ was the firstborn from the dead. He died and then he was born of God. And frankly, my friends, you've been misinformed. People are blinded to this as a whole. But we have to die, and then we will be born of God if we have God's Spirit in us, if we have been walking with God, if we have been willing to obey our Creator. God gives His Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. Acts 5 and verse 32. So let's understand that. Christ was the firstborn here, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to Him who loved us, and washed us from our sins in His own blood, and made us kings and priests to His God and Father. In His plan, we're going to be over the world, ruling during the next thousand years, and then beyond that, the universe. And we've explained that coming millennial rule of Christ many times. We will be ruling as kings and priests over cities and over nations on this earth. Are you thinking about what the Bible says like that over and over? Or are you just going along with traditional Christianity and you just think, well, you're just sort of good in the way you interpret good and then you fall off to heaven with nothing to do? No, my friends, that's not the answer at all. God has an awesome purpose for your life. He is going to develop within you the very character of Christ so you can be over cities and over nations and finally help Him under Him and under Christ to rule this entire universe. He's made us kings and priests to God and to His God and Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. True Christianity is exciting in its possibilities and in its absolute promise for us. We were born, you were born, for a tremendous purpose. Don't let it slip through your fingers. Be willing to understand, to listen, to believe, to act. Notice back in Luke, the 20th chapter, here is Jesus Christ speaking again directly. Luke 20, verse 35, But those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, nor can they die anymore. 
For they're equal to the angels and are sons of God, notice, being sons of the resurrection. That's what Jesus said. They will be sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. We are born of God by the resurrection from the dead. And we will be glorified with a glory that I think is almost incomprehensible to most people's minds because they've never been taught it. And it seems strange to them. I grew up in mainline Protestantism. I never understood these things either. But they're clear and plain in God's Word. And many things and many proofs have shown me that God is going to make us His full sons. And the Bible is very clear on that. If you read the Bible with an open mind and an open heart. Notice Ephesians now, if you would turn there with me to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 3, verse 14. God says here through the Apostle Paul, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is praying to God, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The kingdom is called the kingdom of God. The church is called, if you look in the Bible, the church of God, all named after God the Father, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend. And many people read over this, and they hold this sweet love stuff, and they don't understand it. But that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, that the one who was with God from eternity was willing to come down here and die in writhing agony. Why? So you could just float around in heaven with nothing to do? No! A thousand times no! He came to this earth so that he could assist God in reproducing himself and creating other beings to be full sons of God, full brothers of Jesus Christ in the very family of God and share eternity with them, ruling this vast universe. An awesome purpose he has in mind for them. That you may know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God if you're filled with all of the fullness of God, my friends, what does that mean? How can you be filled with all of the fullness of God and not be God and not be like God and not be a full son of God in the kingdom of God, the family of God, grown great through the resurrection from the dead of whom Jesus was the firstborn of many brethren and his brethren, his brothers will be like him. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And that power can work in you today if you will really surrender to God. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. We have an awesome human potential. We are going to be full sons of God, real sons of God, not lesser third-class angels or animals down here by comparison at all. Turn to John 17 with me now. Jesus spoke these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. We've got to really know God, to understand God, to walk with God, talk with God, commune with God. Really, not some sentimental thing, but know that one who gave us life and breath because we're going to be with him for eternity. I have glorified you on the earth, Jesus said. I have finished the work which you've given me to do. And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. We know that Christ was the one there in the beginning, as we've seen back in Genesis 1.26. God said He would create man in His own image, in our image, He said. Christ was there. He's the one who was the Word, the spokesman. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He had all the glory and the power of God because He was God from eternity. As you read in John, the first chapter, He was the spokesman, the Word, the beginner of creation. 
And we need to understand the glory Christ had. All that glory is going to be given back to Him because He was born of the resurrection as we will be born of the resurrection. Notice His prayer in verse 20 here. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in Me through their word, that they all may be one as You, Father, are in Me, and I in You, that they may be one in Us, that the world may believe that You sent Me." And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Not some lesser oneship, but that we may be totally one with God, just as Jesus was one with God. I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me." He gave in His plan and purpose that glory to us. He wants us to have that total oneship to be full sons of God as He Himself is. My friends, that prayer will be answered. Will you and I wholeheartedly surrender our lives to God? Will we let Jesus Christ live His life within us through the Holy Spirit? Will we be willing to change? Will we really be willing to change and achieve God's purpose for our lives? Again, be sure to call or write immediately and request your free copy of our fascinating booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. Then you will know why you were really born. This vital booklet spells out in detail God's great purpose for your life. It's a powerful booklet. It may change your whole perspective of life. Call now. Request the booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. Be sure to tune in next week to another powerful Tomorrow's World program. You will be taught and challenged with this exciting program on a topic most people do not understand at all. In fact, I'm going to speak on why men must suffer. Why must men suffer? Why the trials of the test? Does God just allow people to suffer for no reason? He has a reason. Very few understand. Tune in next week and tune in every week as Richard Ames and I give you meaning behind today's news and the fascinating meaning of life itself. See you right here next week. The informative booklet offered on this program is yours absolutely free if you call 1-800-934-5579 or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. Be sure to visit our webpage at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program was produced by the Living Church of God.